All right, so now that I've shown you how smart guides work, we're gonna combine smart guides with another feature in Illustrator called Draw Inside. So right here, I've already started an Adobe Illustrator file for you. So now you go to File and Open. Okay, in my Chapter 3 demos, I have folder 3.5 draw the X-Men logo art. And right there is my Illustrator file, ready to open, ready to go. So we'll open that up. And you can see that we have a very similar logo like I did with the word Nielsen, except now it's gonna be a big letter X. We've got my vertical rectangles already drawn out. You can see the letter N like we did and the letter E from the word Nielsen in the previous tutorial. But I also have a big photo and my ultimate goal is to put this big photo inside the X-Men logo. Just a big X when I'm done. Okay, so we'll just leave this photo floating above. And you'll also notice that when I need to draw the letter X, all I needed to create was a tiny little rectangle. That's it. Okay, because you have your white arrow in Adobe Illustrator. So if I go to the white arrow, that is my editing tool. I can hover right along the bottom edge of this rectangle, not on a corner, but on the bottom edge of the path. And with the white arrow, I can pull this apart. I'm just going to pull it all the way down right to there. And I'll let go of the mouse. Okay, so I've just taken a tiny little rectangle, one of the easiest things to draw in Illustrator, and just pulled it apart. Okay, if I take my black arrow, I'm going to click and drag and select so I have the entire kind of abstract shape selected, all solid anchor points. And then I need the opposite to make the X. So right down here, I have on my toolbox, either a rotate tool, or in this case, a reflect tool. So I'm gonna pick the reflect. Okay, if I go right back onto the toolbox, on the reflect tool, I'm going to double click on it, and that brings up the reflect dialog box. So I wanna keep it on vertical. Just imagine there's a vertical spine running right through this X. So I wanna keep it on vertical, and down in the lower left, I'm gonna click copy. So I just flip or reflect a copy. Now it doesn't exactly land where I wanted it to land. So if I go to my black arrow and I'll just keep this selected, I hit the left arrow key on my keyboard and just kind of nudge that over, especially if I just have to move a short distance. I don't wanna click and drag when I can just nudge by using the arrow keys. Okay, so like I showed you before, if you select both of these objects, we have not created the letter X. I'm gonna click on the fill and I'll fill them just with a light color. It doesn't matter what color, but you could see right there, we don't really have the letter X. In fact, if I click outside and select one of them, now you can really see we have two separate abstract shapes. What I wanna do is blend or merge them into one large letter. So I'm gonna take my black arrow, select them both. On the left side of my toolbox, about halfway down, I want my shape builder tool. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did in the previous tutorial. I'm gonna click and drag so I can add this to this to this, come up to this, and across to this. And when I let go of the mouse, they will all merge into one. Okay, the only glitch here in Illustrator is if you merge shapes and you are still on your um, shape builder, you can't change the color. See, I'm clicking all over these colors. Nothing will change until I go to my black arrow, then I select, then I can change. I don't know why it does that, but that's what it does. So just be aware, you can't change the color when you are still on your shape builder tool.
Okay, so the letter X is done. I'm gonna zoom in on these small letters below and do the same thing. I'm gonna select this abstract shape, double click on my reflect tool. I've got the same vertical axis, so I'll flip a copy, hit the left arrow key on my keyboard just to nudge that back over. On my rectangle tool, I'm just gonna start here and drag a little rectangle for the dash. Okay, for the letter M, I'm gonna switch to my pen tool and I have to overlap my shape. So I'm gonna start inside this rectangle. Click, go to the corner, click. Now I've got my alignment guide, click. Now I come down, click. Now I've got my alignment guide again, click. Go to the corner, click. Overlap my shape. Then I'll come down to this edge right here. Go to intersect right there. It lines up with the top edge of the dash. Click. Now I've got my uh, bottom alignment guide. Click. There's my alignment guide again. Click. There's my intersect lining up with the top edge of the dash. Click. And back to the start. Okay, we'll, we'll do all the adding of the shapes later. So I'm gonna switch back to the rectangle. And now right up here in the upper left corner, I'll click and drag right over to there. In the middle, I'm gonna start right here, click and drag and overlap my shape. And then in the bottom left corner here, I'm gonna click and drag right there. I get that vertical alignment guide so everything's lining up. Okay, the letter N, just like we did before, I need to draw the connector with my pen tool. So I'm gonna start inside the shape, click, corner and click, edge or path, click, overlap my shape, click, go to the corner, click, overlap my shape right here, I'm gonna intersect and then overlap. Okay, you gotta overlap your shapes. So now I can take my zoom tool, option click to zoom out so I can see everything. I'm gonna click once on my black arrow, then I'm gonna activate my shape builder tool down here on the left. And like I showed you in a previous tutorial, if you hold your command key, you will get your arrow, click and drag to select, let go of the command key, and now I scribble to add those shapes together. Hold command key for my arrow, Click and drag over the three shapes for the letter M. Let go of the command key, and now I scribble over those shapes. And like I said before, you can hit something else. It doesn't matter. It'll only work on the shapes that are currently selected. So if I start down here, I'll hold my command key, click and drag up and over all the shapes of the letter E. Let go of my command key and scribble over all of those shapes. Start down below, hold command key and select those three pieces of the letter N. Let go of the command key and now I scribble over those shapes. Perfect. Let's zoom out, option click right here so I can see everything on my screen. And I'm just gonna select everything that I've drawn and fill everything with a color. Doesn't matter what color it is. I'm just prone to pick red for some reason. So now, just like I showed you in the previous tutorial, when I have all my artwork done, I can click on the black stroke and hit the question mark key. That'll just leave me with nice, solid letters. I also don't need my template anymore. I'm done tracing the scan. So at the bottom is my template. I can throw that in the trash. Don't need it anymore. And all I wanna do, like I mentioned, is put this photo inside this letter X. Okay, and here's how easy this is. I click on the letter X, and then way down near the bottom of your toolbox, right underneath the little red slash key is three little circles, and directly below the red slash is this symbol, it says draw inside. 
Okay, so with just the letter X selected, I click draw inside. And that will put a set of brackets around the shape of the letter X. Okay, these brackets are containers. They're container boundaries. So anything I do from this point on will be trapped inside this shape until I dis, uh, dislocate these uh, brackets, until I turn them off. Okay, as long as they are showing on the screen, I can only work within these boundaries. So I'm going to click on the photo, go to Edit, Cut, which is also copying at the same time. And now when I go to edit, paste, it knows where to paste that photo inside the boundaries of the brackets. I didn't need to move the photo. Illustrator did it for me. Okay, and I'm going to double click outside. Watch the brackets. When I click, click, now the brackets are all gone. It's a done deal. Okay, but as I look at this logo, and I'll zoom in a little bit. I don't like how Wolverine's face is getting cut off. That looks bad. He's one of the most popular characters. We can't even see him. So I'm going to option click a couple of times and zoom back out. Okay, what you've just made is a group and it's a clipping mask. A clipping mask is a group. Okay, in Illustrator, a clipping mask is using the shape of one object as the container for another. So I use the shape of the letter X to be the container for my photo. The letter X is now a clipping mask. Okay, what I want to do is you cannot use your black arrow. Okay, if I clicked on the photo and then tried to move it, it's just going to move the whole thing with the letter X. So I'll edit and undo that, obviously. If I click outside and try my white arrow, and now I click on the photo, now I can see the boundaries of the photo itself. So I'll hit the right arrow key on my keyboard and nudge the photo over a little bit within the shape of the letter X. I can see I still have room to nudge because it's not running into the X, so there's still plenty of space, but I like this look right here. I'm going to click outside. And in case you forget to switch to your white arrow, let's say you're on your black arrow and you click on the photo. Notice I don't see the boundaries of the photo. Okay, so here's a way around it. If you insist on working with your black arrow, you could click, but you're not going to get the photo. You're getting the X. So right up here are two tiny little buttons. Okay, the one on the left says edit the clipping path, the actual letter X. If I click the one on the right, it says edit the contents. So when I click that, there's that outline of the photo again. I can hit the down arrow a little bit just to bring a few more characters into view, like Storm right there. Okay, I'm editing the contents. If I want to switch back to the letter X, I click over here. Now I'm back on the letter X. Okay, or you could just avoid those little buttons by using your white arrow. That is it. The only other thing I want to do now that we don't need all this space above is take my artboard tool right above the hand and I'm going to come right up to the top center and just pull that down. Just make a shorter little artboard for this short little logo. There we go. Done deal. Okay. Notice your layers panel. We did have the picture on its own layer, but when you do a clipping mask using draw inside, everything gets sucked up to the top layer. And I can tell everything is on the top layer because that has a little triangle. Okay, layers that have artwork on them can be toggled open. So I can see there's all these letters and a clipping group on this top layer. This bottom has nothing there. So you can either leave blank layers there. They're not going to do anything anyway. 
or if that tends to bother you, throw a blank layer away. Either way, you're still gonna be fine, but that's what's happening with your layers panel. Whenever you create a clipping group, everything gets sucked up into that one top layer. So save this as X-Men logo, last name, first name, X-Men logo, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.